Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. And I'm Roman. And on this channel, we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you new recipes for your kitchen. And this week, we are taking advantage of fresh seasonal produce to make a fantastic peach gazpacho. So we're going to show you several ways to do it. We're going to, of course, as you can see, do it in our Paco Jet, but you don't have to. Stick around and find out how exactly you make this soup. And I'm going to pass it right over to Roman because this is kind of a short, quick, easy demo, and I really want us to see every single step. So I would say the first thing is my question when we talked about this soup was, it's a peach gazpacho, but I'm seeing other things in here. What are the ingredients in this soup? Well, obviously we have peaches because that is the base of our peach gazpacho, but we also have peppers, yellow, red, we have cucumbers, we have tomato water, uh, we have a little bit of vinegar, we've got olive oil and salt. All these things are going to melt together to give us this really nice, summery, smooth, fresh, sparkling soup. Okay, wonderful. So how do we put that all together? All right, so first what we're going to do is we're going to put it all in the bowl. We're going to start with our peaches, which I have peeled mm -hmm. ahead of time. Uh, and then we'll add our yellow and red peppers that are also peeled. The uh, reason I peeled these ahead of time is because uh, once we blend it, we don't want to have to pass it through a chinois or mm -hmm. a fine mesh strainer. It'll come out very, very smooth. Okay, awesome. All right. mm -hmm. uh, next ingredient is our cucumbers, mm -hmm. also uh, peeled and de-seeded. Our cashews. Now, when you make gazpacho, uh, a traditional gazpacho is usually made with bread because that's what will hold it together and give mm. it its, its velvety you know, texture uh, and stability, so it's not watery. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, when I developed this, uh, I developed it gluten-free in mind, and so mm -hmm. I did it with cashew nuts, which cashews have a really like, um, kind of subtle nut flavor, so you don't really get anything too strong, and it works well in this recipe. Okay, did you soak those cashews first? I did soak those cashews in water overnight. Um, you can do it up to f three to five hours. Okay but overnight optimal, mm -hmm. if you have the time, of course. Um, now I'm gonna add, I think I put away my salt. And so once you add your salt, you kinda just wanna mix that in mm -hmm. together. Uh, that salt will help release some of the liquid from the peaches as well as the tomatoes and the uh, peppers, excuse me, the, the peppers and the cucumbers. The tomatoes actually is a juice, so we're already getting the juice out of that. All right, and this isn't gonna taste like peppers? This is not going to taste like peppers at all, nor is it going to taste like cucumbers. Um, the peppers and the cucumbers are there to add a little bit of freshness to the soup. Okay. So what you'll get more of, uh, obviously, is going to be the peaches, um, but those peppers and, and that cucumber will give it a little bit of zest, a little bit, a little bit of extra flavor. It's kind of like the French. When you make a mirepoix, you add a mirepoix to your dish, mm -hmm. it gives it that balance. It gives it um, a little bit more flavor, and that's what these are for. Not too much, just a little bit. It won't overpower the peaches. You'll get more peach than anything else. Yeah, and it looks like you just added some clarified tomato water yes, in what, here. Yeah, Do we, we need clarification? You don't need to clarify it. Um, you can just get some tomatoes, puree in the blender, and then pass it through your chinois or fine mesh strainer. I use the spins off to clarify it because it gives the uh, tomato water a little more oomph, mm -hmm. a little more freshness, uh, thereby giving your gazpacho more freshness. But it'll work just as well with just tomato water passed through a chinois. He's being chefy. <laughs> Very. <laughs> All right, uh, last but not least, I'm gonna add my olive oil. Mm -hmm. Olive oil is great. Use a really good one because you're gonna taste it. And this'll, this'll also help um, give it like that smooth, velvety texture. Mm. My so, favorite is the California olive oil. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's my Once this that's is emulsified, you, you, I mean, mm -hmm. this is the best. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to mix this all up, make sure it's nice and blended, and then we're going to throw a piece of plastic wrap over it, mm -hmm. and we're going to let this sit at room temperature for about five hours. Okay. Uh, you can go longer. I've gone as long as eight. You kind of don't want to go any more than that. Uh, it starts to get really mushy and you don't want anything to go bad. So I usually let it go for uh, five hours and then I'll put it in the fridge and I'll even let it go overnight sometimes okay. before I do it. But you, five hours is plenty of time for you to let it sit, let all those flavors melt so we come back and we can blend it together. Okay. And of course we did not take a five hour no, break. We did not. So we did that ahead of time. Let's pass that one over. All right. So this is our gazpacho soup blended, nice and melted. As you can see, you can kind of check it out and see uh, some of the what vegetables have become pretty translucent. 
Yes, so a you, lot of liquid has been released. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you got all that liquid out of there, and that's all going to add to the flavor of this gazpacho. Cool. All right, so let's, why don't we just go ahead and blend this. Mm -hmm. Get that all in there. And we're going to blend this at a medium-high speed. So, And you want to blend it for about, I would say, three minutes, straight three minutes, because you want to get those cashews all blended, and okay. you want to get that emulsified. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't, if you're using a... If you're using a Paco Jet, I wouldn't worry so much about the emulsification mm -hmm. because when you do freeze it, that blade is spinning so fast, it's going to emulsify it on its own. Okay. But if you're not and you're just going to blend this, you want to make sure to give it a good three, four minutes spinning okay. to make sure that you got everything emulsified. All right, so now that we're done blending it, we're going to go ahead and put this into our Paco Jet. Okay, and for people Beaker. without a Paco jet, they can just basically, this is the point when they would strain it and exactly, it's ready to go. Exactly, and it's ready to go. Okay, I would, great. I would actually refrigerate it first mm -hmm. for two to three hours before having it. It'll taste better when it's really nice and cold and fresh. Yeah, I love how easy this recipe it's is. It really easy. took like no time at all, really very little active time besides the vegetable prep. Yep. Great. And this was a hit at the restaurant, by the way. Mm hmm I bet it is. It looks so fresh. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this into our freezer. We're going to freeze it overnight, uh, make sure it's uh, frozen before we spin it in the Paco Jet. We'll be right back. Okay, now that our gazpacho is frozen solid, um, we are going to go ahead and spin it in our Paco Jet. Okay. Uh, we'll do that uh, for four revolutions, mm -hmm. back and forth. Uh, we will not add air, because we don't need to add air to this. Okay, easy peasy. So I know people are always like, why do I need a Paco Jet? Why do I need a Paco Jet? And the reason you need a Paco Jet is because if you care about how smooth that soup is, the straining will be absolutely delicious. You're going to be happy with it, but it's kind of like good, better, best. So I like to say good is straining it. Exactly. Better is a creamy, and best is going to be it's a Paco, Paco Jet. Jet. Definitely. So, so that's kind of sure. your tears. Yeah. For sure. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to go, and we're going to start her. All right, I can't wait to taste this soup. But first, I'm going to implore you to please subscribe and hit the notification button, like, and comment below anything else you want to see us do here in the test kitchen. So this is really important to help a small company and a small channel like ours reach more people who are interested in finding new recipes for their kitchen. All right, Roman, are we ready to taste? We are ready to taste. So. Uh, this is our gazpacho soup. Now, once it's spun, it's still kind of icy, you know, because it's frozen, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so we let this sit in the fridge for three to four hours to melt out, and this is what we have here. Okay, I All can't right. wait to see it. All right, so let's do it. All right. Oh, I also have here a little bit of tomato foam. Just, just a little something to be extra chefy. Yes. Uh, and add to our soup experience. All right. So. And which is made with our foam magic. If yeah. you're interested. Of course, all of today's recipes will be in the links in the description below. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Very, very smooth. There's a little foam magic right here. Ooh, that almost looks like ice cream. It kind of does a little bit. All right. Wow. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's dig into let's it. Dig in. Ooh, do I mix uh, it with the, I mix yeah, it with the foam in. I, I usually mix it when I do it. Yeah, this is just like, I feel like I'm about to eat melted ice cream. Oh, man. Mm. That is really good. It's so fresh. It's like, it, it tastes like summer. It's not even really summer yet, you know, mm -hmm. but it tastes like summer. It's smooth. It is smooth. super healthy, super healthy. Mm. And there's basically nothing in here but vegetables. Exactly, and it's not cooked, so you, you didn't lose anything in the process. Oh, this is so good. It's like you get the tartness from the peaches and the mm. vinegar. Yep. I don't, I taste maybe a little tiny bit of cucumber, but no little, peppers. But no peppers at all. But it's really just tastes like, it tastes like a summer garden. Exactly. It's like, you know, it tastes like you're, uh, you're in your backyard having a good time. I think, mm. I love how little real work there is in this recipe. No, this, it's mostly just downtime. This is, this is like one of my, was one of my favorite recipes uh, coming up with, to be honest with you. I yeah. love doing this. And, and everyone at the restaurant always raved about it. And it was so easy to make. I felt like, I felt a little guilty actually. Mm, yeah. So whether you're serving this at your restaurant or in your kitchen, you're going to be super happy with it. Mm. Give it a go. Let us know how you feel about it. And until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Roman. Yeah. That's good. That's good.